I'm Chris. So you may be familiar with the list formatting samples repo. Uh, it's a very popular repository PNP offers, right? We've got 100 plus odd samples. Uh, you can head on over here to GitHub and you can browse directly here, right? We show the new sample browser and the list formatting samples are going to be added to that very shortly. Uh, we also have this kind of uh, site here with some different ways to look at things and some tips on how to get going. Uh, and all of that's great and absolutely should use those resources. But sometimes what you'd like, right, instead of just coming in here and you click on a view sample and, you know, you go to bulletin board format and you see screenshots and that's cool. And then there's instructions on how to create this in your own environment, right? Here's the view requirements and everything here. And that's cool. And that works really well. And for the bulk of our samples, that is absolutely the way to go. Something new put together here and like to get uh, some feedback and see how we like this is the idea of a kind of a showcase site. And so this is a communication site that's got several samples kind of all grouped together. In this case, we're looking at several of the chart samples. Uh, and this can be applied to your own tenant using PMP remote provisioning with PMP PowerShell. There's some instructions and a template for you. Those templates include uh, files, includes all the list items um, and all the formats. So you can just kind of spin up a site, apply that format, and then you can start playing around with these formats. So I want to take a look at this site and I want to take a look at some of our amazing samples. We've got awesome contributors all over the world um, doing some really th amazing things. If you haven't had a chance to look at these, uh, Charting is something that comes up a lot. Now in you know, SharePoint Online, you've got the ability to, you know, there's a chart web part, right? You can do other things where you embed some, you know, variety of things. There's a lot of ways to solve the charting problem, but sometimes you want to do a chart directly inside your list or using just your list data, right? And that's where formatting can really come in handy. So we'll start with a couple of column samples here. Uh, so a real easy one here is taking a look at the generic timeline. And so this is coming from our friend Tetsuya uh, Kawahara. Out of Japan, a recent MVP, a huge contributor on the list formatting samples repo. And, and this is a fairly simplistic format. We've got some other very interesting timeline type formats. And the idea here with this format, again, this is just a web, web page, right? We've got links to these samples here. Um, anything you want to find out about the author over here, uh, right? If we want to just open that over on GitHub, we can go and see it there and do the readme and everything else we need for looking for extra details. But here we can actually play with it, right? Because this is actually on our site. It's a timeline. And you can see that it's got a nice hover card. And if we wanted to change that data, for instance, we could go directly to that list. And then we can come in here and we can actually change things around, right? So in this case, the timeline works by if there is something in the column, right? Just anything at all, it's going to then uh, put a dot and then you're going to put that information here. That's not always super obvious from the screenshot and everything else. And so this allows you to really try that out. So this is an awesome timeline. It just creates a nice little to line with dots right down uh, your row. You can have multiple of those here. Very, very simple to apply. Just cut and paste. Now, if we head back here, let's take a look at another one. Uh, so a number gauge. So this comes up a lot by default. You can do like a data bar and let's zoom in a little bit here, uh, right? But an actual gauge that shows like a percentage field, which is what we have here, um, is available to you as well. All right, so you can see this progress here. There's two different versions of it. There's one where red's on the left and green's on the right, and one that's the exact opposite where green's on the left and red's on the right. And you can apply this very easily to, you know, a number column. Uh, you can also do this with like the data bars. There's a couple of visualizations, but this is a really nice one, a really sample to get you going on that. All right, let's take a look over here. So then we've got this brand new one also from uh, Tetsuya. Right, so this is a inline Gantt chart, which is really, really cool. So this is designed to be viewed a year at a time, right? So it'll just take some dates here from inside your view and apply a really nice visualization here. Uh, so you can imagine using this inline, just trying to get an idea of what a project's going on or any number of ways, and then you could certainly expand this, uh, you know, to be a little larger. For instance, this one actually works exactly that way, right? So as your column width grows, your, so does your Gantt chart. So very, very cool sample from Tetsuya. And then we come back here and we've got like a column chart also from Tessia. I said the contributor, uh, but the idea here is it's just taking numbers and this is an example. You probably want to customize this for whatever your columns are, uh, but the idea of displaying these on an inline chart is really, really powerful. Uh, again, it gives you that nice inline visualization uh, without having to affect the entire view. So you can use that inside grouping or whatever else you need because it is a column format. All right, so we've got a few more column formats we're going to add here that are uh, related to charting. Uh, we'll get that added here before we hit the publish button, but there's also a bunch of view samples. So if you wanted to do more than just the inline, you want to take uh, the entire view and you want to format that into a chart, there's a number of options for you. Uh, so we'll take a look at the chronological format. 
And this is from Frank, I'll just say. And this is a really neat one. So the idea is here, it provides uh, this detail here, and it's just a strict visualization of no interactivity. You can see it's very, very clean. And if you click over here, you can actually see the list item data behind it. All of these have an all items view, so you can see the actual data behind it, what goes into that format, and then you can switch it over to the chart view and see it in action. And then, of course, if you wanted to just jump right into it, you can not edit current view. You can format the current view. Let's just close that guy. You can always format the current view and see it in action and change whatever you need to here, right? So if we didn't like uh, neutral quaternary right there, we could say, you know, neutral primary which I don't think is going to look dramatically different. There you go. But the idea is here, you can quickly customize this, try it out right here in the browser without having to understand uh, all of the ins and outs of moving things around in GitHub. All right, so let's see. We've got a couple more minutes. I'm going to just highlight a couple more of these. Then I just closed my site. <laughs> uh, what is my, uh, there we go. All right. So now we can take a look at like, so we've got a nice project Gantt chart. So we looked at a Gantt chart that was in line. Uh, we've got this one. Uh, and I'm going to just call you GDK Max because that's what I refer to you as from GitHub. <laughs> I'm sorry. And maybe Garrett, I don't want to say it properly. So awesome contributor, uh, done all sorts of cool stuff, but check this out. So you can take this list and make an actual inline Gantt chart. Uh, these are individual list items and kind of just lays them all out based on a project timeline. Very powerful. And then, of course, we have this column graph format from our friend Anu, uh, who has put together a full on bar chart here or a column chart. Right, so you can see it. It's got interactivity. It's it's marking the the top ones, right? It's very very cool. It's drawing it in line right there. He's got another one very similar. So if you wanted to go for the bar graph format, right? So again, if you want to just go sideways on that, very very cool with some extra image functionality added in here. And then of course another one from Tetsuyan is a butterfly chart. So the idea here is you've got two different numbers, um, you know, with text here. Now he's showing some really cool things in that if you change the uh, display name of this column, for instance, it's going to show up here just like that. So if we, for instance, we go here and we see all, we're going to go to our all items, just so we can see those. So if we change this cost right here, column settings, and we're just going to see edit that so we can rename it. We're going to call it cost with an exclamation point because that's a great name. All right, so we do that and we look back at our chart. You can see that we hover over this, it's already taking advantage of that. So again, really cool chart, but it's also showing how to take advantage of some advanced functionality, uh, such as pulling in column metadata. All right, and I think we're just about done here. One more uh, is our timeline format. So again, we've seen a few of these, again, from Tessia. This one has two different options. It's got a vertical timeline and it has a horizontal timeline. And this timeline has a click to see all of the things that have happened uh, at those times. And very, very cool to give you the different options on seeing how those hover cards are integrated uh, and you control the entire view and how you can see that in a web part. All right, so in summary here, uh, we've got a lot coming here uh, with all these samples. We're gonna try and make this a little easier to digest and use, uh, which is a great way to set this up as kind of a series of learning portals. Uh, if you're trying to encourage your power users how to learn formatting and take advantage of some of these samples rather than sending out to GitHub, which you certainly can, uh, you can help them start here directly with data they can manipulate and adjust. And uh, that's about it for me. Excellent. Thank you, Chris, and also fixing our scheduling. Uh, so because I took too long time on the intro, but really awesome stuff. Absolutely brilliant stuff and helps on driving driving the, the an understanding how this can be built. And we'll certainly work on getting the template out and, and more easily available, uh, maybe in a lookbook and then outside of lookbook and all of the videos, how to get the install that and all of that. So. Really, really cool stuff. Thank you, Chris, from Dan. Um, the only, only just the feedback on the demo. We didn't have any hor horses on this one. Um, this is true. And I still laugh for the fact that every single time we reference anything on horses, because, because we saw quite a few of them in a the chat, think about those people who never actually seen you present, and they have no idea what that <laughs> reference is all about. <laughs>